I beat him up so badly, yeah. I see someone get lip in the head, like, back. Their head splits open. Oh, bro. Instantly. I it was like 14 minutes long. I was in there, just me and him. You had, had like blood round everywhere. two. In a place like prison, bro, first of all, you're dealing with severe mental health. Oh. Chopped up his girl. He put her in a mincer. I didn't understand till I got older what, you know, me, Umi, Ebi was going through at the time. Yeah. Life in general, now we're realizing how difficult it is. One thing I know for sure brings me peace when it comes to life is our, is our, our religion. Bro, don't stop giving charity. What I, do, what I donated, bro, I got three times more back. That second right there. Well, that's the power of Allah, bro. And I looked at myself and I'm like, freedom! That is mad, my nose is bleeding. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Quick interruption, be sure to subscribe down below, turn post notifications on. Let's grow this channel to about 100k subscribers. And also, if you want to listen to the audio version, check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Leave us a five-star rating, follow the channel. Let's get it growing. Bismillah. Yo, hello guys. Welcome back to this channel. I know you probably haven't seen my face in a while. You can see by the channel name, it's also now changed to Voice of Idris. Actually making a podcast show. That's right. A podcast show known as Voice of Idris, where I'll be diving into stories and talking really deep conversations with amazing guests. Without further ado, let's get started. And it's only right that I get in a special guest who is very close to me, very close to my heart. My, my brother Yusuf, also known as Property. What are you saying, bro? Come on. Bro, honestly, way over time, way would you? Um, definitely. It's definitely something that I always told you should have started this a long time ago. You know, something that I feel like a lot of people will love your voice, they'll love your that your approach, the way you, just everything about the whole podcast is just you as a character, you're very caring, understanding, and you're always open to question people to understand things from a, from more of a, 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 a deeper perspective where not only would it create value for yourself but also for the viewers that are watching and obviously a lot of people have been asking where's it just where's it just <laughs> and i think this is the best way to bring yourself back out 100 percent. you know have you not seen i've lit up already yeah <laughs> it's like, my, it's it's like my natural my natural habitat man crazy honestly it's 100%. it's something you always popped up to me and told me yo listen launch your podcast launch your podcast I don't know why I was holding back for so long. I think we can we can dive into it a little bit deeper into yeah, the podcast, talk about my journey, your journey, our journey together, if yeah, anything, definitely. because we've got a really deep journey. But you know what? Before we start, I want to bring in a segment. It's called Would You Rather, right? We've got a few questions that I've got lined up. Okay. And uh, yeah, you feel free to just discuss your answer. So you know how Would You Rather questions is, would you rather do this or yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you processed it. <laughs> All right, cool. Would you rather be stronger than average or smarter than average? Smarter than average. Why? Why would I want to be smarter than average? Because the strength that you develop doesn't always get you far in life, but the, the knowledge that you increase will get you further in life. Oh. Um, <laughs> <I'm speaking> oh. <laughs> are you caught me on the spot as well, you know? <laughs> that one, hey, that Shakespeare. <laughs> Hey, that was me. You used to be starting with a bang. <laughs> nah, you gotta bring this one back. You gotta bring this one back. Yusuf. <laughs> bro, since when did you become a philosopher? Yeah, bro, you know, I've done a bit right. research. You're studying, you're studying. studying. Nah, you're right, myself. Storm. Uh, but when you think about it, though, I feel like being smart, you're able to achieve more. You can, you know. 100%. Yeah, definitely. If you're strong, of course, it can push you because. It, it doesn't mean just physically strong. It can also be mentally strong, which I think mentally, being mentally strong is much better than physically strong. But, wow. <clears throat> you should have not I bad. thought you were talking about from a strength perspective. Obviously, of course, like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. You know what it PT, feels like. I'm, a, yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm into my training. 100%. Okay, this is another one. Yeah. Would you rather be the richest person in the world or the smartest person in the world? Think carefully because richest means you're already rich. You're sorted. Or smartest person means Obviously you can get the smartest there. person by far. Mm. <clears throat> by far go on hit us with another quote you said come on another quote another quote <laughs> let me spice this one up for you lot. Um, rich in finance doesn't always bring you places because it might you might be able to buy things but when it comes to knowledge bro you can sit down in a room and actually become relatable you can have all the money in the world you can be around people with money mm. but not necessarily would you be able to hold a good conversation but when you've got knowledge bro and you can sit down in the room it's a different kind of energy mm. you know like we can all step out and be around rich people and <clears throat> not be able to hold a conversation or even vice versa then themselves people with a lot of money sometimes they can't really adapt and, and and engage with people from different um 
knowledge or different mindset. But when you've got that knowledge, bro, you can sit in any single room, regardless a person's rich and poor, and you can embrace that energy. That's right. I feel like we've sat in some some, <clears> some <throat> tables some serious with places, yeah. serious people, and you know we wasn't the wealthiest, richest, but. The, the, the knowledge and the energy that we had is what 100%. attracted people to speak to us and respect us as well. But I don't know, I feel like being rich, okay, yeah, it can it can definitely solve a lot of problems. And knowing that you're the already the richest in the world it takes away a lot of stress from this life, to be honest. So when you're rich, do you really need to be smart anymore? Is it necessary? You can just enjoy your life, no? Not necessarily, bro. And you know what? Sometimes the elements of enjoying your life, how much can you enjoy in your life, bro? But the elements of understanding and learning something, there's always some sort of satisfaction. That's true. You know, because every time you learn something, especially if you're someone who wants to achieve more, you know you want to implement that or you know you've studied it. So now it's like time to put that into perspective mm. where when you've got money, what? You're going to buy another car, you're going to buy another house. That fulfillment is not the same because mm. the money's there. Like you can just achieve these things a lot more easier. Okay. Okay. Uh, another one. Oh, okay. This is a good one. Um. Would you rather go through life unable to forget anything? Right, this one I need to process, yeah. Right. So you go through life with never forgetting anything or never remembering anything. I reckon I'd rather remember everything. <clears throat> okay. For, for many reasons. I feel like we always remember everything. Mm. You know, and we live that element and then you can use it depends what sort of mindset you've got and how you want to channel these things because we're obviously two brothers who've actually experienced quite a lot in life mm. and obviously we remember all these moments and the more sometimes you remember it, of course it can put you in some sort of dark places sometimes or it can make you feel like it can affect your next approach and certain things in life but embrace it, you know. But then if you're forgetting everything, then how do you know about sometimes taking the next steps or how do you even become present? How can you how can you enjoy a process or a journey if you keep forgetting everything? Yeah, again, just, some people yeah. live that life, you know, especially those who intoxicate themselves. They forget everything, and you look at them; they they they're, they're living very miserable, very sad. Where again, you can also meet people who embrace too much and remember everything, and they also fall into a dark place. It's a tricky question. I feel like a balance of wealth is also that's good. Say, but, but that's the whole point. If yeah. I was to choose one, I would definitely choose remember everything. Okay, good. And the last question, last but not least, would you rather be stranded in a desert, so forever, by the way, or be stuck in jail forever? Stranded in a desert where there's nothing, you're isolated completely, or would you rather be stuck in jail forever? What, you mean jail as like a prison experience? Yeah, no, like a, just be, a prison, just being in a prison just forever. Yourself. Just know it's a life sentence. Yeah, I'd rather be in jail. Really? What are you going to do in the desert? <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna toast me into a little corn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll come out cool. as a shrimp. <laughs> I'm All right, just thinking about deserts. Cool, not a desert, but let's say you get stranded in the middle of a forest forever, but you're never allowed to leave. You're always gonna be in that forest. I feel like you can adapt there's in a more, forest. Yeah, bro. more so in a the forest. You, there's there's that better nature element. Mm. You know, there's a mixed weather condition there. I'm not gonna be always in the hot. Mm. You're gonna deal with a bit of the rainforest. You got different animals. Mm -hmm. You know, you can make friends with monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> like in the desert, bro, you gotta dodge the snakes, you gotta dodge the crabs, you gotta dodge crabs. Not crabs, what are oh. they called? Um, <laughs> scorpions. Scorpions, yeah, but you gotta dodge the scorpions and crabs in the desert. Like, also, bomb. like the 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 there's less tropical element. There's there's no fruits apart nah, from dates. Nah, for sure. No, for sure. Fair enough. I mean, you know what? You know, being in jail is not a pleasant experience either. I know, um, you know, that's something we probably actually can segue into talking about as well because, you know, the viewers don't really know much about, you know, our backstory and our journey. And, um, you know, we obviously have a, 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 an experience where yourself, Karim, and my other brother as well, you know, have been in jail so it's actually a, a topic we should we should tap into obviously you know it was a uh, how many years ago was this i think you're over, 20, over, 10 years. over 10 years okay Come over 10 like 12 years. years that's crazy over 12 years wow don't you think sometimes there's a whole different generation of our life like a whole different period of life that yeah completely like, but it, doesn't it feel like it went so fast you no know what i'll be real with you yeah it went so fast but I will still remember the first day. Like, it was like yesterday. That's what I want to get into. Do you know what I mean? That's what I want to get into. Yeah, that was the maddest, that was the maddest thing. Talk us through the first day. 
I want to talk about the first day I spent in the cell. Okay. For the first two weeks, I used to still dream of me being at home, waking up with my eyes closed like everyone else does. You know when you wake up in the middle night, you go into the toilet, you're like you know your footpath mm. to your toilet at home without even opening your eyes. Is waking up for the first two weeks, still thinking I'm at home, and I'm walking to the toilet and I bang my head into something. And I'm like, and you come to realize, oh shit, I'm in a cell. Like it's a different. Then eventually you adapt to that. So now you wake up, you know, you go off your bed, you turn right, and, you, and the toilet, the, the the toilet seat's there. You can just, you know, what I mean, do a wee. But that was the first thing that used to get to me. Um, the next thing, a lot of people don't know, but some people do know, is that. I wasn't really committed to my prayer. So the praying element, from the day I stepped into that cell, I promised myself. Because again, it's one of them things, like I'm a born Muslim and um, it wasn't really part of my discipline to keep up with my prayers. I used to lie to myself or I used to go days without praying or I used to rush them all at night time. But the day I got arrested and I went to prison for it, I never missed one prayer, even up until now. And I said to myself, I need to create this routine. I didn't know where it was going to take me because even then, even though I had faith and I was a Muslim, I was a believer, there were still elements in myself where you will look at me and you wouldn't consider me as a Muslim. A, because I didn't pray. B, because of my attitude, my behaviour, my character, the things I used to get up to, the mindset. That when I went in there, that's all I prayed for. And I prayed for guidance. I prayed for bringing back an element of feeling because back then I, I was numb the things I used to get up to and literally being fearless I wanted to bring back a bit more of who I believe my parents raised me up to be you know and um yeah I think that was like the first two weeks was experiencing that <clears throat> falling to a good routine getting used to like someone closing that door taking away your freedom um and then obviously I wanted to make certain changes. Like everyone used to go prison, come out hench. And now before I went in there, I was a fat kid, you know, like had really bad eating habits. And I think even just going to prison, just analyzing the food, I just knew I couldn't really adapt to eating that sort of food. So I thought, let me take advantage and actually go through a weight loss. And that's what I did. And um, obviously in the beginning, everything seems like, you expect it to be like in a movie, but it's a complete opposite. You realise you're spending a lot of time on your own, so you're instantly thinking, what do I do with my time? Um, what, do you, what do you actually do with your time? No, seriously. You know what? Yeah, it's, it's how many hours you're 20, in the zone? In the beginning, because obviously you're on the induction wing, so you're pretty much locked up 23 hours and a half. Cool, so for 23 hours and a half, I want the viewers to just picture that in their minds, yeah? You know what? Yeah, you, in the beginning, you go a little bit crazy, I, I believe. You, I feel like you think you need to think about what you're doing. Like, I started thinking, I need to do, like, I'm going crazy in the room, I need to count all the bricks. Like, wow. You think you need to do that. Or you start thinking, oh, I need to do so many push ups. Or like, I just need to keep my mind busy, but I come to realize if you just let it be, it not will, even that. If be. you pray, yeah, because your prayers, like once you started praying and you made good intention, like you you got less distraction there, mm. and like you, and and there's nothing else you do apart from when you pray. That's all you do. All you know, day. What's, you know, it's crazy you say that because even though I've not been in prison or experienced a jail cell, but I feel like many people in their own mind can be in prison. Minimum and seven. there was a part of time, like there was a part of life, my life where there was like that, that prison within my own self and literally prayers was the only thing that would get me through. 100%. It would literally be, every prayer was the one thing I'd look for and look forward to. And that's what kind of helped me get through my jail sentence in my own head. So it's interesting that you mentioned that as well. But yeah, talk us through generally the first... So you walk into a prison So what actually happened What's the process like Oh what's the process Yeah it was Because like, the first bit Is actually Getting into one of them Circle vans Yeah you know I mean? that as well the circle van. You know what people, people don't even know What circle vans yeah, even are but they just, It drives past, it drives past every, day. every day You don't realise that There are inmates inside there Who are that's probably right. going to Never see the road again Or maybe might come out soon But and that's the craziest feeling Because yeah. like You just You can see At this point You can still see freedom You can still real life You see people Living a life. But you know what I was thinking back then? I actually thought I needed this time away. And then I also, I also, from a business perspective, I said to myself, oh man, look at all these people like rushing to work. Look at all these people like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, serious. Yeah, no. 
Like, I was but I used so to rush to school. Did you guys ever see me when I was there? Bro, I'm telling you. Like, All of me and my I friends, saw, yeah. I'm not gonna lie, me yeah, and my yeah, boys, yeah. yeah. Every circle van, we always used to make sure we'd say, like, yo, yo, yeah, just yeah, free yeah, the exactly. random. Thinking you, it was one of you. That, we see that some, <laughs> no, no, 100%. People, some people know what, what's the purpose. I, I'll be real with you guys. I didn't even know what a circle van was before I went in one. I didn't know those were the. I used to think that was a money box van. Same. Or I used to think the long one used to carry horses. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I, <laughs> I used to think the long ones carries horses and that but then like, once you sat in one you realise like you're like in a little Jim and Neutron spaceship in there like a little <laughs> box that you sat in this hard the most uncomfortable there's no how many things out. are there how many ca- not cabins how many like depends that's something that's a short I went, I've been in a small one where there's like only four people or three people and I've been in ones where there was 12 people so you're seeing another another Im- you like, can't see them because oh, it's, it's literally it looks like it looks like um, like you're getting into a spaceship or something like oh. you're just about to be launched. It's a box, yeah. It's literally a box, and there's sit down. thick, thick doors, and there's an emergency window up there which you try to kick punch your whole journey to the prison. <laughs> it's not opening. It's meant to be an emergency door. I don't know how it's an emergency door, but you don't get out of so it. Yeah, everyone that gets in there tries to push that. But I think I think the guy said to me in his whole twenty years, only one person managed to escape from that. No way. But you can, bro. You, you sit there, and I'm telling you, like, you do try bang that just for the sake of it, because you got nothing to do. And sometimes when you go into prisons as well, they will drop off people from other prisons. So, you, you, you like, your prison's there. I don't know why they want to go to five different ones, but they can, they can stop you first. Mm. And you got to sit in that van through all the other prisons mm. until they drop you off. And then, like, also, you can't see no one. So, you're talking to brothers, yeah? And certain men have, like, the road man chat and... They're giving you all this gangster talk and then when they come out they open the, the you door. You see what he looks like? like a little nick. <laughs> <laughs> and you're buying into their stories. They say, yo, man's done this. I'm about to do this. I'm going, I'm on remand for this, yeah. And you see little Charlie, you see little Charlie come out with his long hair like the skin. The skin, bloody. You think, yeah, man. You're lucky you're going to that prison, bro. <laughs> so That's there was that element. And then obviously then you're in in there and you're thinking, yo, my man's talking about it. he's just chopped a man head off and you're like, where? Like, and he's like, yeah, I'm looking at a long time. Because obviously when you're coming from the circle van, you're coming from, you're picking up different kind of people. Some people are coming back from court for sentencing. Some people are coming back from court for remand. Some people are going back for the hearing, whatever it is, or like they're coming back for their trial. So you do see different things and obviously you start to deepen life from a different perspective. That experience in itself is an experience, you know. Then then you turn up. And the ones that are so used to going in out of prison, they pre-warn you. They're like, you got to strip naked. Mm. And in my head, I'm like, nah, nah, nah. I'm going to affirm this one. I'm not letting that happen. Well, you got no choice. Yeah, of course. It they takes got away. a kosh. And you know what, yeah? Being 15 at the time, yeah, I realised that was so vulnerable, bro. That was disgusting. Like, that is absolutely disgusting and to know these man's mindset I don't care who like, I, I don't care who it is if a grown up man asks anybody at age of 16 to pull down their pants squat down bend over and cough and they actually like they actually look underneath like, they actually do their job if that was me I'd be like yeah just take it down have a little shake and then I wouldn't even look and something falls at sight and falls at that man, and they bust jokes within each other as well. Mm. So I started to feel vulnerable about that, and I started to feel like I need to bug out. Yeah, and that's what I did. Not the first time, but when I knew that was coming again, when I went to court, because obviously I was a Roman, I, I'm, I'm not doing it, bro. I'm not doing it. I just yeah, felt it's... vulnerable. I was like, bro, I'm, I'm, that's not happening, and it, and, it, and it escalates really quick. And I got away with not having to do that, but again, like. To know that that's a man's duty. Yeah, it's crazy. It's a what, bit tapped. Yeah, it's crazy know? because there's a lot of stories coming out as well from from that kind things of like, things exactly. like that. So crazy. That, is, that in itself can literally make you go. Crazy. Never thought about that actually. You as know an approach, bro, you have to bend over. You have yeah. to cough. You have to spread your cheeks and like you get these jokey old men laughing about it, and they know you're uncomfortable. They know mm. you're younger, and they're looking underneath, and they got their torch or they got the little kosh. You know what I mean? So, but if you're trying, to, but if you got to see it from another perspective, though, they're basically trying to prevent people from bringing stuff inside. I would, which... I would, you know what? You spend you spend long enough in your cell. Yeah, let that person have whatever he wants to have in there, and it won't even last more than a week. Then it will disappear. So, 
there's there's an bro there's there's enough you can do to not even put your head there. It's the aspect of putting your head there and actually looking at it and putting a torch and laughing about it. You know, but obviously I get what they're trying to do. They're just mm. trying to keep things safe and stuff. But that in itself right away made me feel better. Like, yo, and the, the guy who's been in prison a lot of time pre-warns you. He's probably used to it. He just he? does he it. He, he just does yeah. it. Then obviously <clears throat> they talk to you about an induction wing. And I'm thinking the induction wing is going to be like the comfortable wing. You know the intro. I mean? It's going to be intro. It's mm. going to be chill. No, nah, the induction wing is the same as the rest of it. If anything, it's a lot more harder than the induction wing because the inmates move so quickly there's no structure right away actually it was funny I was actually in there remember with little man the yeah, 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 yeah. he was in my induction wing there was another guy that went to my school there was like seven people I knew already in the induction wing so right away obviously the guy's like oh don't be careful who you make friends with and I'm like oh I know these men anyway so it's calm but then they split you up I think you spend a week or two, depending on how busy the prison is, in the induction wing, and then they put you in a normal wing. And obviously, Cream wasn't there already, so right away, I'm trying to look for a way to make myself pattern so I can be with Karim. And I remember there was one guy who Karim said, yo, my brother's in the induction wing. I think Mr. T he was. Mr. T. He was Mr. T. I Mr. remember, T. the brown remember guy. Him? Brown. He was a cool guy until he became snaky. Yeah, him. He was Krim's best him. friend or something. Yeah, he used to be cool, but he's a shady guy. So he's like, oh... He's like, hey, Chubbs, like, your brother's, he's a brother's, he's like, me, yeah, I don't know if that, I'm just doing my best to try and put him in a place where I can just be with Karim. And obviously, you have to go through a lot of these, like, medicals in the beginning, Um, you just got to get used to, like, getting into a brand new wing now. And I can't remember, did I go straight to his wing? Now I went to a different wing to start off with, and then I had a fight, went to his wing. No, before, then, before, 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 you're going straight into details, before yeah. you stepped into the wing now. Like what are you think? What do you have that? I was that just excited fear? to um, see everyone, bro. I'll be real with you. I was, I was just excited straight away. I was excited to see people because you're just in that cell, you just want to get out. And then you're looking well, in that outside. Moment, in that moment of time, are you realizing what's actually going on? Are you realizing? Nah, you know what? Because when you walk in there, you look at it, it looks like a it looks like a, a playground, it looks like a, cr- uh, a crash, not even a playground, it looks mm. like a crash. There's, I'm trying to there's picture like it. connect four, you know, the big giant connect four, there's a pool table. With the ripped. You see the one we because we went to visit when we went to Felton. Remember we went to visit it. Oh yeah, that's the one. That's yeah. where we went to. But, yeah, but that, doesn't... that for me, I don't know. You walk in there, it's like I don't know exactly. It looks like a crash. Yeah, but it, it was, was like two a... floors as well, isn't it? Yeah, two floors. It was a triangle. It was built. It was like a this. triangle. It that's what I'm saying. Like, literally built like, this. like this. So you got wings coming across that way. You got the double cells at the end, and you got another wing there, and you got a second landing. But I don't know. I and that's to... it. That was that's a wing. That's 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 all, that's where you all come out. You mix in the middle bit there. So there'll be like two, three sofas, two pool tables. I think or one pool oh, table, one ping pong. That was. I'm telling you from my experience, just seeing it there. I remember we walked in quickly for like one second into one of the person's um cell. Yeah, bro, it was tight. Bro. Tight, but it's tight, 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 tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like oh, small in this room. It's tight. It's small in this room. This is definitely bigger, but yeah, this it's is... the colors as well for me. It was, yeah. it was a depressing color. It was very old. And now another thing, actually, they give you prison clothes. And the first thing I looked was at the boxers. Oh. <laughs> they look like you know them them hats that people wear nowadays. Which one? Them weird hats. You know, people got long hair. They wear them funny hats. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the chef hats. <laughs> I need to buy chef hats. Yeah, like, yeah. They got the chef hat cut in between and then oh. put them in the boxers. You got the Gucci slides uh, shoes as well. Yeah. They call them the Gucci's or something. Like, um. The leather shoes. You only get them when you when you get naughty. When you're naughty, you go to the block. They give you these leather shoes, and people try to rock the leather shoes to show that they've been blocking it. But the most uncomfortable Gucci's like <laughs> they're not Gucci's for your and information. And then there's plimsolls as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember the plimsolls. I remember them still. Color. I think they were great. But you plimsolls. But you're allowed to get clothes given and shipped into you. And... Only if you're on remand. Only if you're on remand. Yeah, if you're sentenced, you can nick someone else's stuff, but yeah, you couldn't get clothes. You could, or if you did, you get one for the visit. Mm. You're very restricted. But, but you don't want to nick someone else's clothes, though, because that's that's basically trouble. Well, I'll be real with you, those that, that f- teething is the biggest thing in prison cells. Yeah, I heard that, that in the wing. That's the biggest thing. That and uh, like trading, not trading, but like owing, so doing someone a favor and yeah, owing doing them or someone something a favor like that. And stuff. But I think the most common thing. Everything gets teethed. No Everything. Way. Your clothes, your crepes. And you wouldn't know because where it's, 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 it's a very fast pros. Like the, the Felton was very quick. It was a Roman jail. So 
a lot of people were reminded once you get sentenced, they'll send you somewhere else. So people never really lasted long. So someone would nick your trainers, and go knowing he's going to get shipped out very soon. or he's, you're, Once your stuff is gone, you wouldn't know who's taking it. And that person doesn't mind hiding it in his cell for a couple of days or a week or two and not wear it. But now he's going to take it with him. So I think it was that. There was a lot of teeth. Everyone would teeth your stuff. And a lot of gambling. People be bad. That's it. Not, yeah. not favourite. That's what I was looking at. Gambling. gambling. A lot of gambling. A lot, a lot. A Everyone's lot. gambling. Mad. Everyone's like... Everyone placing bets. But if you owe someone money, I heard it's it's, it's trouble. Like, Bro, I, so the worst thing you want to do is owe someone something. You know what? The That's only what way people well, used to get away, yeah, is by locking themselves up. There were certain kids that won't come out. Certain kids with certain sentences that will never leave their cell. Bro, I'm telling you now... It's like opening up, you know, them fridge with the dead people in there laying down mm. in the duvets, like mm-hmm. that. The mm-hmm. dead, these kids were literally staying in the duvets, covered up like that, laying in that bed. You open their flap and they're just there, they've not moved, they don't eat. They're the ones that you really struggle and suffer, you know. And I experienced someone committing suicide in that like, the wing. They're seeing him, <clears throat> they had he had we get these blue t shirts and he's ripped it in half, yeah. And the bed has a little frame in the back. You know, the metal bed had a little frame. And his head was like that. And he's tied his head to it. Yeah, but it wasn't that that killed him. He got very liquid. Yeah. And before obviously he killed himself, he placed it in his head. And like put that, like ripped the t-shirt and basically placed the fairy liquid and tied it to his head. With a fairy liquid like that. So what happens with the fairy liquid? Because it's thick. Once you start swallowing that, it closes the air wave. Because there's nowhere to really hang mm. yourself. So he's closed the air wave and he's pulled his hair back, tied it, so he couldn't really move. So by the time he's drank a bit of it, even if they tried to give him water or taking it out of him, it's closed with his air wave. And he was literally a mixture of his kid. Big, he had a big afro. And I looked at it and I'm like, yo, I'm just gone. Wow, I'm sorry, wait, just made a little warning for people who are watching or, yeah, or listening as well. Sorry about that, guys. Um, And what's crazy, yeah, he was actually, he, he got given a manslaughter sentence, yeah, for something he didn't even do. Him and his Cody were leaving school and then the other boy thought it was funny to snatch an old lady's bag. As he snatched the old lady's bag, the old lady's falling down she smacked her head on the floor so she died. Mm. Because in the video, they see him running off and then obviously as kids, they went through the bag and like went through her purse and they find a fingerprint, they arrested both of them. The guy is genuinely telling people, I've never done it, I didn't do it, I didn't know what, like, you know what kids are like, they're just snatching bags and stuff. And obviously everyone started basically mocking him, bullying him for killing an old lady. Wow, you know? that is... And I think it was a lady from within his area who was well known, so words got around really quick and I think he didn't leave his week, he didn't leave his cell for like two weeks. Did not, he, like I said to you, he was literally in his cell. And then I remember he was right next door to me and I opened it. And I looked at him and he's gone. Like that. And it was just mad. Seeing that and I'm like, yo, that's a bit tapped. <clears throat> I see the man. I said, where else did I see? I see hot water. Like, yeah, like you, go to the, you go to the canteen bit, not the canteen, like the kitchen bit of the wing, which looks like this old school dinner lady. Dinner is like lunch like, school, primary school. Yeah, like, you know what primary school, you, mm-hmm. got, you go there with your tray, so you all queue up. They usually let the bottom land in and the top land in, so bottom land you queue up. And then you know on the hot trays underneath is hot water. That's what underneath keeps the, the wa- food. Yeah, so yeah. there's a tray on top with the food, yeah, and yeah. underneath it there's a hot water. Yeah, the guy's taking the food like it was almost finished. Well, actually, it wasn't even almost finished. He's moved it out, and he saw his pig, and it's got that hot water just splashed in. And I just Ooh. see my man. I remember, he, bro. He looked like his whole face got acid. But I remember him. What's his name? His name's H from Strat Hamza. Hamza from Stratford. His whole body's got burnt. Mm. completely burnt and then um, yeah bro you start seeing these things and then you start to you start to think yourself like how are you going to keep yourself safe in there you know what I mean so I'm thinking is so then I remember I started I remember in my cell I had bare weapons underneath my bed I broke the, the wood underneath the bed yeah and I snapped it in half and it, the wood became a bit sharp but it was one of them tools bro that like, you don't you can't carry that bro you just you keep that there if someone run up is in your cell but that that was there always there ready the um, snooker balls in the sock in the sock I remember that I tried making that when I knew things were getting a bit mad 
um, where it was batteries in the socks. And that was another one. I've never done that, but I see that. I see someone get licked in the head. Like, Back. You see it? He's, but the head splits open. Oh, bro. Instantly. I feel, like, I feel like when you're in jail, that's where people get the most creative. Yeah. You guys once explained to me how you, is it you got electricity or you would turn off the electricity through just like sparking oh, no, if you just, something Yeah, no, something. but it is, yeah. It, obviously, where was the young offenders? There was no lighters. So people oh, were getting burned, yeah. like roll-ups from the B side, which is the 18 plus, through like going to the mosque and stuff. And then obviously when they're going back to the cell, there's no lighters. Only B side can keep a light. So you haven't got a lighter, you will get... You'll use your, you used to get like yogurts and stuff. So you use the aluminium from the top, the yogurt, you know, when you peel it. It's like a science experiment. And then you cut it in half yeah. and then you roll it. So you use the aluminium, then you get your socket. And then you know the socket, the top bottom is not an electric. You can yeah. just press that. So you put something there, like, I don't know, like a pen or something. Then you use the two aluminium rolled in, tucked in to the bottom holes. So it's connected to the electric. And then you get a spoon with soap. And if you just touch it, it sparks and it creates flam. Like it sparks. And if you keep paper next to it, it burns. No way. So people used to do that. But if you do it wrong, it cuts off the whole wing. And then in the evening, there's only one gov. So if mm. you do something stupid like that, there's no TV for the whole wing until the morning, like governors come in, mm. it's about three, four, so they can open and reset it and stuff. Mm. So. Some people you just you, like you 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 would have slept all night all day because all the best programs in the evening it waited to watch something and then someone buses the electric. There's no electric for the whole wing till the morning. I can imagine no TV, no radio, no kettle. So if you wait to make your noodles at night time, there's no electric. It's just there. I can imagine that person being hated by everybody. Yeah, but yeah, no, nah, the the creativity that comes out of uh, some. I feel like no, it's another cause... thing. Yeah, Krim showed me. Yeah. Mm is that you get a toothbrush, yeah, and you melt the toothbrush, yeah, and then you put it against a screw. Because in India, they don't have the plus or minus screw. Mm. They got stars, they got weird shapes, yeah. And if you melt the, the end of your toothbrush and you put it right against the screw hole, it will mold it, and then you put it straight into cold water. So now you create a screw. <laughs> you get it? And then Krim was trying to show me to do something like if you wanted to hide something underneath your toilet seat or your sink, and you that's the, the only way you can open it. Yeah. You get it, yeah. But you got once you see that once you make that toothbrush, you got to make it small and you got to carry that and park it off outside your cell. Mm. So obviously you do your cell checks and stuff. So you don't want to be caught if anything snapped in half. If you got a toothbrush and you cut it once you got exercise yard, you got to dash the other piece. If you leave any any evidence like that, there was a spin your cell. Um, Man, it just sounds hella creative and scientific. I feel like it's the knowledge you gain from being in an environment like yeah, that. Yeah, like straight is, away you, you expand your mind. Differently. You just le learn to survive, learn how to how to survive. So I, 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 I don't think me, you have a problem surviving in the jungle, like nah, we said in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd much rather be in the jungle. But the you? best thing for me, I think, was exercising, bro. Yeah. Like, you know, I generally went to sleep to wake up in the morning just ready knowing I wanted to work out straight away. Oh, 100%. I feel like it gives you a purpose whilst you're in there. Cause... And you don't realise how many push-ups you can do. Yeah. Like, push-ups becomes like, I don't know, bro, like a daily routine, like an easy daily routine. Like, you're just banging these push-ups, bro. And the momentum and the rhythm you're doing it at is like, you start doing explosive ones, you start doing claps ones, and all of a sudden, bro, these push-ups feel like nothing. It's just literally a movement that you just, you do every day. That's crazy. You know? And obviously, like, losing things in your cell to create a little workout. And then they give you this piece of paper called cell workout. And they expect you're going to get, like, a little can. But then you become creative. You get your you get, you get get pillowcase, chuck bare water in there, start making it heavier. Mm. You know, you start doing bed press with it. You start using... I was just thinking bare different creative ways to use what I've got. I've, I have a question. Do you think you can make genuine friends in there, like, who will be there for life? Because you're all pretty much in the very... You connect with some deep souls, and the, I think there's, I think most of the lifers are the ones that settle well with everyone in the wink. Then the ones who are in there and they're just they're gas, they're scatty, get a lot of gas people like a lot of them are just gas, you know. But wait, wait, if you're willing to fight, then you know they're not about it, mm. you know. But it's, it's just that verbal talk, and then obviously if people like to shit, that everyone wants to see everyone fight, but yeah. Have you ever had any fights? Yeah, of course. And it was fun. It was fun? I remember one you, bro. Like, our whole story behind it is he was one of the pagans and then I'm in my soul and then 
Sunday, there's like less governors in the wing. And then he was on keeper part. He got put in our wing for keeper part. And then... um, What does that mean? You get put... Keeper part means like they, you can't mix He gets people. moved from his wing to your wing to be kept apart. Kept apart from his wing or even our wing. Okay. You know? But he's not allowed to be around everyone. And obviously the man in red showed me, yo, he's come to the wing. So he's in the wing. And obviously he's on keeper part. And I remember this, there was there was a, there was a supply governor, not a supply teacher, but like a governor who's not usually on the duty. She doesn't temporary, really know. Temporary, basically. Like yeah. A temporary one, yeah. She was there and I knew, I clocked she was a bit dopey, you know. She kept saying hello. The wings was, there was less inmates, so she kept like giving us like her time, checking for a right. And every half an hour they check anyways. And then I started talking to her. And then after I see her, she busts his door open and she let him in the shower. I think like half an hour later, she still hasn't like clocked. She's left him in there. Mama's obviously just chilling. So I just said to her, oh, like, can you please give me the machine to cut my hair? And Sundays you're allowed to usually, but when you're when Mama's on keeper part, there's only one lady and like no one else in the wing. You're not even allowed to open someone else's cell. She busts my cell open and she's giving me the thing of shaved my hair broad. I'm talking to her as I'm doing it. I'm distracting her, this, this and that. I've gone bold. Remember, you came to visit yeah, me, I was yeah. bold, bold. <laughs> shaved it off completely and then I've gone to the shower she's opened the door and I'm like yeah this is gold time and he was still in the shower like chilling basically trying to stay out of his cell and I've gone into my shower and I'm just showering and he's like who's that and then I tried to act foreign because I'm thinking I look foreign now that I've shaved mm. my hair bold and I knew I was going to sit on him and then He's chatting to me and he's giving me this chat. He's like, yeah, I'm from these ends. I'm like, and I'm clocking. He's like, that's, that's him, innit? I wait for him to come out and just licked him in the head. And once I licked him, he just dropped. And there was like this radio on the side. I just grabbed his head and just licked him onto the radio. And literally, she's forgotten that we're in there. And obviously, where the shower was was further down. Usually, if there's like two, three governors in the wings, they're aware that like, they can clock on. There's one like chilling there. there. Shower area, one's chilling there, the, you know, like there's two in the main bit. And they've kept me in there. And when I looked at the CCTV, bro, I beat him up so badly, yeah. You can see parts of it where I was chilling, I got so tired. You know when you're fighting <laughs> and you're getting tired? It was like 14 minutes long I was in there, just me and him. Wow. Like he was just gone. Like he was like... You had like, like round two, round three, four. Bro, no, but I, I just kept licking it. I don't know why I just, I just wanted to... Yeah. Just hurt someone. And obviously everyone then after heard about it, and then from there, like it's like you gain a bit more respect, and then straight away, they, that's when I was with Karim in the same wing, and then they moved me straight away. Like, like you two, are, you two are hazard, you need to move. Nah, do you not have fear when you're about to approach a situation like that? Nah, bro, it's fun, bro. I'm telling you now, from when we were on roads, bro, I did will tell you, bro. Like, you'll stay quiet and activate. Mm. You can't think about these things. You just set it straight, like. It's a weird feeling. But how, is that, how does that get implemented into your head? How do, how do you have that natural instinct within you? You must have a bit of fear. Every, like, we're human nah, beings. Even, there's no fear in that. In, in that approach, when it comes to fighting, there was never a fear. As you get older, I feel like... I don't even know. I just feel like you... Responsibility. You, like, responsible. you just know how to attack. You know, you know how I was, you know, you know how you get talented strikers? You know how to like dribble the ball and score a goal. I feel like when you're in the roles, like, and you can, and, you, and you're confident with your fighting, and you know you got that one bang. Obviously, like, I used to sucker punch people. Not even like, I, I used to be quite sneaky. You know, I wouldn't even let them know that I'm coming to punch them. Just play it down, play it cool. I'm sorry, da, 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 da. boom. Someone's holding the bank. So, um, yeah, that was that's what I used to do quite a lot of that. <laughs> and I think that's why now when I've gone into the boxing scene, I'm always like confident, cheeky with it, you know, it's just like, sometimes your eyes and your energy can make someone scared, mm. you know, it's not always good to fight a scared person because their adrenaline sometimes can overwhelm them and push them through certain boundaries they didn't know they had, but if you catch them properly, but you're putting them out to sleep. Mm. Do you yeah. believe that someone who might not be so physically strong or physically involved, like through that um, fighting, for example, can they be mentally strong? Can that help? Can... Can that help you get through situations like that? Depends, bro, because I'll be real. If you're in a cell and someone's come to bat you up, you need to know you got to keep your guard up and start fighting back, bro. You can't be, like, mentally strong. Mm. No, if someone run up on you, you can't be like, oh, yeah, I'm mentally strong, I'm just going to hold these, bro. You're just going to have to defend yourself. 
Don't you ever just think like that when you're about to hit someone, they're gonna die, they can die. You can punch them. But I feel and like it when happens. you get older, when you get older, you think slightly different, but bro, them moments there, like I would never hit an innocent person, but them moments there, bro, it's like you know what this person's also capable of doing. So it's just a form of defend and that's it. That's crazy. That's mad interesting. Last question about the the whole Joel experience is a normal person came in there to do his time. Can he get away with not having a single fight? Yeah, well, you can't get. It's impossible. Well, you, you you can try even be a clown. Can you be? So, yeah, exactly. You I feel like a clown, a clown will get you away be, with it. No, nah, you can't. People It'll will be love someone you. Someone that dislikes you. You can be. You can be a life bro. In a place like prison, bro. First of all, you're dealing with severe mental health. No, and someone can be so savage one day and become so humble or you can get someone who's so humble all of a sudden bro he just can't take it and he starts going on a, on a rampage you can't really control it and plus like you're receiving sad news you've come off the phone to your girlfriend she's not talking to you no more like you can you, your mum can text you like you can get bad news from call I don't know bro and you're just in there and you know when you get bad news in prison that's what you're thinking about and until you come out the next 24 hours, you're not going to stop thinking about it. And that's all that's all. That that's crazy. Like, yeah. You might not even get a chance to go on the phone and get more news or everything's so slow and you think the outside world, something, so much is going on. All you ask when you speak to people, like, what's going on? What are you getting up to? You think they're going to come tell you something crazy, but they tell you it's the same shit. You know, and you're always looking for validation or something. Like you think you're going to come out and there's going to be a brand new iPhone. Do you know what I mean? That's crazy. Because you know, before you went there, a lot of things were going on. But yeah, everyone... But I remember calling everyone, speaking to everyone, and everyone was just... Not on nothing. That is actually crazy. No, I remember when we went... On. I remember when we went to visit and we did the project. The... You said to me, this is probably going to be the highlight of the week, of the month, that day. For them. For them. Yeah, yeah, of course. I, I, I just couldn't, I, I couldn't understand it. But you saw that when we got, we, yeah. that approach you got for them. The, you know what's crazy? The first time we walked in, I remember we went into the, what was that a big, was it like a basketball, indoor oh, basketball yeah, or something? The, um, a hall or a sports hall. We went into the sports hall and I'm seeing, bam, man, badminton? sat down. Huh? Oh, they were sat down. They, they were sat down. Badminton? No, no, no. They were sat down. They were prepared for us to come. I'm seeing bare people in front of us. Well, they won't play badminton that day. No, 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 no. There was loads of different brothers. Like, you can just tell the serious guy, the not so serious yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. There's always the Akis. I'm looking at them, yeah, and we had to do a speech in front of them. Yeah. And I spoke first year, and, you know, I don't come from that lifestyle, but I'm trying to explain to them the other perspective, which is also important, which, which we can get into. But I can see that they're not really re relating with my thing. As soon as you spoke, Boom, they got it. They're like, yeah, okay, yeah. these guys are not just paid uh, you, yeah, youth workers coming in here to talk, but they're actually people who are going to come and speak. And there was that automatically this respect for each other and there was that relatability. And then when we went to do the gym session, the yeah, couple guys, it. yeah, we had the gym session yeah, with them yeah, and the couple guys came to me and just actually wanted to speak to me about it. And I remember there was that one one guy, like you would never think he was a guy who would be, you know, end up in jail. He was 19 at the time. And I was like, what did you come in for? And I think it was drugs or something. And he was that makes sense, brother. Yeah. Nah, that, that's another brother. I remember. I know he never leaves my head. He's the big, big hench he's guy. He's on rolls, you know. Is he? Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, he he, he, he was huge. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Comparable guys in there are huge guys. <laughs> um, but now nah, that kid there, he was 19 or something. I was just like thinking, how is he surviving in here, bro? Like, but I went in there and there was a boy here. They called him the Dexter Murder. <laughs> no, no, no. Listen to Jimmy this. Jimmy Neutron. Because I remember I went there after that again by myself. Yeah. Listen to this Mad. story, bro. So this kid, yeah, he's he was he's obviously tapped. He was white. He was there, literally, like he was just sat on the table like this. And he was just looking. No one spoke to him, and no one really f with him, bro. Like he did not speak. And then obviously, like throughout this whole thing, you know, I like to wind people up as well. Like yo, patting up your face like that, because I'm thinking I'm here to chat to you. Like, I'm not here. Like, I'm not here to sugarcoat things. I'm trying to create opportunity. I'm kind of show you guys. And he was one of the only ones who actually was doing a life sentence. Mm. And obviously, at the end of the whole speech and that, someone came up to me like, no, don't chat to my man. Turned out to be this guy, yeah, he's mess he was like 14 or 15 at the time. He's messaged his girl, yeah, and he and and, and he told her, oh, I'm not really in a good headspace, I don't really want to come round not tonight, this, this and that. And then after, um, they liked him, she liked him, why, baby, I love you, come here, like, come stay, come see me. He went there, bro, 
you chopped her up in pieces, put her in a mincer, yeah, in the garden, and put her in a suitcase, and there was, like, traits of blood dripping, and they nicked him. So they called him the Dexter murder. Ooh, it was a movie. And then, obviously, at the end of the whole conversation, and he apparently he spoke up to me, and he doesn't speak to no one for the first time. And it was, like, a chubby white kid, but he looked so innocent. Wow. And, like, he's just got severe mental health. That's the thing, man. And I mean, <laughs> chopped up his girl, he put her in a mincer, put her in a suitcase and dragged her on the suitcase, like walked her out of the house and then there was that like, blood trace and then nicked him for it. I don't and know. I he don't doesn't know. speak to yeah. no one, apparently, and it was just in there, just... I don't know what I'd do in a situation like this, man. I, uh, You know, I pray I never end up in a place like that and I just try to think about it myself, you know, even just coming to visit you guys at the time. I think I was so young that I didn't understand it. And because I was busy doing my own life, you know, playing football, being busy and whatnot, I didn't understand till I got older what, you know, me, Ummi, Ebi was going through at the time. Yeah, of course. It was just mad. Like, did, you, did you guys ever think about me? Like, genuinely? Yeah, no, like, genuinely, genuinely, nah, genuinely, like, genuinely, 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 genuinely. Nah, come on, because... You guys don't. You guys. You guys expect me to be okay. Nah, right? nah, 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 nah. Come on, man. The, nah, the worst bit, yeah, was knowing the situation that we were in before we went, which I'm not gonna open up too much, but to know that, bro, like, someone's got. Because in our family, bro, there was always one, two of us just trying to lead in it, and just knowing that all that responsibility was gone, and also like, remember when you're in Romania, you don't really know, innit? And our solicitors are saying, yeah, you're not getting an ex, you're getting some severe time, this and that. So then you just, yeah, bro, you're just thinking. And all you do is care about the outside world. Mm. And you think, like, especially your loved one, that's all you think about. Obviously, your only, like, mum was the most important for Because you can just see, she she kept strong, though. Yeah, she actually yeah. did. Oh, woman was right. so strong. She never gave up, bro. She actually didn't, bro. And the journey and she made... she was still made... trying to be confident with you. She was still... Yeah, bro. bro. To know, like, yeah, the journey is actually like, bro, that them train. We had, had Sarah as well, young, bro. Was Sarah was like one, two years old. No, I haven't. That's mad. She'd make a mad journey. And Umi's not a person who fits all, fits in those environments like nah, that. Bro. Bro, Muslim all. woman, hijab, coming very from shy. very shy, <laughs> sweet, like, <laughs> you get me? And she's, you know, and obviously it was hard as well the times when she would come visit like a double combo it was like a <laughs> buy one get one free it was you and Krim at the same time bro oh, yeah. it was, there was a period of time where we would come and it was two visitors in one go and it was just like it was just a weird experience man but I just but remember it being she was always still positive though yeah she was but she I, never made but you feel comfortable I, she always supported you one thing though that I think was lacking a lot was the support on the outside right it was just I don't get why I never got supported bro this is a question I'm I'm trying to understand in my life. I'll be real with you. I feel like you understand. You probably would get me a little yeah, bit because no, you that, you probably massive. understand me the most. But I just don't understand, bro. No, I understand the massive. But what you gotta understand, bro, is that when your freedom's taken away and it's in control of someone else, you kind of do neglect to everyone else, bro. And all you're just thinking about is what you're about to process. Mm. You it's selfish, but you don't really. And you know that you know that from when someone commits a crime, bro, and they leave their kids behind, their baby moms, this and that, like, you just don't know it when you're coming out. So I, mean, I think I, that part does get neglected. I made it easy you know? for you guys, though, bro. Let's be real, because I yeah. was not involved. I was not trying to be involved in nah, anything, 100%. man. My worries are Karim. That's why I went to prison, remember? Yeah. That was bro. my biggest worry, bro. I was not trying to be involved just, like, in nothing. Couldn't leave my man in there by himself. I don't know why. Just at that time there... I remember telling the man, I was like, yo, I need to go in there with him. Like, I just need to go. Like, make sure it's good. That's crazy. I just feel like... When, when I went in there, it was the most jarring guy ever. Go <laughs> 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 in, man. Listen, I remember phone calls, yeah. What was that phrase, you guys? Are, hey, listen. are you listening? Hey, listen. Are you listening? I'm hey, like, listen. yeah, I'm listening. No, hey, are listen. you listening? It's like you couldn't hear me or what, bro? No, nah, you need to you make listen sure me. you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> you to make sure you're listening. Like, you repeat need to, it five I need, times. I need to confirm with you three, four, five yeah, there was, there was times that some... you are listening and you're yeah. not going to talk over me because when you're in a cell and it echoes and you're saying they're listening and someone's not giving you the green light three, four, five times, you're talking to him. You can only hear your voice. So you don't know if he's actually listening. He responded. Because he might be talking to you. And if he talks and you talk, you can't hear each other. Mm -hmm. I remember that, man. I was like, non stop. Are you listening? Are you listening? Are you listening? But. 
I wonder if that still goes on. It probably does. It definitely does, man. I just remember being in that visit room and there was like loads of different um, inmates and hearing stories of what they did and what they didn't do. Sometimes I'll just stare at the, like, the guy and try to just understand process, what he did. Yeah. Process. process. I'm processing that. Like, how did... The ones that used to get me the most as well is like just the Muslim brothers and you would yeah. hear that he did X, Y, and Z and you're just like, oh. Cause I imagine, I'm thinking about, you know, just potentially the punishment that could be as a yeah, result of that. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, like, absolutely. it hurts me so much, man, because you also look at the family and the mum that's there, you know, you can tell she tried her best to raise a child, but yeah, no, it's just, a, it's life. a bigger problem, man. This this whole thing is a much bigger problem and, and, and even jail system in itself, we're not here obviously just to talk about that because that's a problem in itself and needs adjusting. But the outside life and life in general now, we're realising how difficult it is. But one thing I know for sure brings me peace when it comes to life is our, is our, our religion. Our, our religion faith, bro, it's, it's worth... I can't describe how priceless our religion is. It genuinely brings peace to everything. And everything. I've, been in the, I've been in some sad times, some really hard times. And you just you listen to, for example, Quran or you just think about your prayers and the, the deen that we have. Bro, it solves the whole problems. It just the confident you get. I can't describe, beliefs. man. I can't describe the feelings you get from this, this, this religion. This. And I remember even saying to people like, even that we're in prison, like, even now on a day to day basis, I was like, I just wish you can feel what I feel when I know it's time to pray, and I just push straight my head down to floor. Mm. Like, I just wish you can feel it. First of all, is the confident because now we actually even know the purpose of life. Most people, you ask a question, and it's not really a common question people ask. People ask, like, what's the purpose? Like, what do you want to achieve? But not actually deep in what is the purpose of life, yeah. rather than what's your purpose? You know, some people can get lost of what their purposes are. And, yeah, like, I want to become this, but it's going to be hard, or I've got to go do this, I've got to do that, or I'll never achieve that. But take that away and actually ask them, what is the purpose of life? Like, why were we brought, brought here? Then, you know, when you got your mum and you got faith, bro, you, it doesn't easy. affect you, bro. It does not affect you, bro. It doesn't affect Bad you. Bad things happen, yeah, calm. Good things happen, yeah, but it's not going to last forever. Um, sad, death, yeah, calm. Inshallah, like, they, you know, you pray for them. Like, good, bad, there's, there's, there's always a, solution, a solution and a calmness and a confident boost on. Like, also, it, bro, it's, it solves and prevents a lot of problems. Mm. You know, like, you, you start to think, oh, that, that's haram, that's bad. Oh, that's gonna have a consequence. Or avoid doing this. Do this the right way. And as soon as you start doing things the right way, you might not see instantly the results. But when it comes, you're like, oh, I'm glad I did it the right way. I'm glad I stuck to the right path. And then the worst feeling is missing that prayer, bro. I, like even, you know, like I bug out, bro. I feel weird. I haven't prayed, or I was late for a prayer, or panic, or scared. Like, fully scared, like, just thinking about, it. oh, look, I've walked out my house, and my something happened, because you've That's experienced, when you experience bad things, and you experience them days where you weren't praying, and you realise why so many bad things will happen, like, bad things out of your control, and it's like, like how the f*** did this pagan know that I was going to be here? Like, out of all places, and you, you remember you didn't pray, or how did I get nicked? Like, out of all things, like, this is the dumbest thing, you know, like, I didn't pray. And then now you remember just always pray your pattern, bro. That's my biggest fear is walking outside. My, honestly, my biggest fear is walking outside the house knowing that I haven't prayed. Yeah. And I tell people as well is to pray that prayer like as if it's your last prayer. Always. Always remember that. And there's another thing as well that I, I, I learned is when you're praying, you're picturing as if you're praying on top of your grave and you're praying as if you're picturing that the angel of death is behind you. Wallah, bro, there was prayers that I did genuinely where I was crying because I'm I'm deep in it. If the angel of death was behind me, that would actually take me away in that moment of time. I, you, can't ex, you can't explain the feeling of when you die, knowing that you'd want to be brought back just to pray one more time, just to have one more second to do things. I think that's my biggest... I think the thing... I think too much... Not too much. I think a lot about death in in a way where it makes me do things I wouldn't normally want to normally be able to do. So there's certain things I struggle to do, certain things I, I struggle to appreciate certain people around me or say, for example, I love you, this and that. And then the moment I think about death, I'm thinking, would I really care about my ego or my pride when I'm dead? 
to be able to say that last I love you to the person that's next to me, you know? Yeah. It's bad, it's mad hard though. Like I, I say I, I struggle with siblings, with family, with moms, dads. But I can't lie, there's been times where you lot would show love to me and I'm like, I don't know how I can show it back. It's just weird. I don't know why. But like, yeah, of course, I love you and that this stuff like that is just mad. I can't yeah. you know, <laughs> I, I know what you do, man. Alright, bro, it's hard for me, man. I think I need to I need to work I love you bro who are we man I don't even care who do you think we are we're nobodies we're actually nobody I one advice I give to people bro and I actually want to add this is bro don't stop giving charity bro it's the maddest feeling like today I actually laughed obviously you don't talk about your charity so I'm not going to talk about what I've done but like it's the maddest feeling bro every time you do good it's like good comes back sh straight away is mad and it gives you this confident boost so it's like your inner self boosts up your ego in a good place. You know what I mean? It makes you happy. Mm. True. Like, I don't think there's anything out there. And I always talk about it. There's nothing better, no more, nothing more satisfying after your prayer than giving charity, bro. This is, this is exciting. <laughs> you know? And even, you know what's crazy? Yeah, before I gave that charity, I said to myself, oh, I'm not going to say what it was. I said, oh. but the devil saying like maybe it's like you can't afford it right now it's not the right time you need you have to go do this you have to pay for this right like that second what I had yeah and I'm like nah like Allah's got me like I'm just gonna put it in there without even thinking about it like it's just well, like, as soon as I left that same location can't believe it I'm just cocking it right now wallah bro imagine I'm going to the mosque and I'm 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 going towards I'm going to the train station here, I thought about giving it. Then that second thought told me, yeah, maybe you shouldn't. Like, right now, just for today, because you haven't got that. With you, or this is all you got right now. I prayed. As soon as I got there, I gave the charity. I came back. I got a phone call. I got a message on Instagram saying, yo, send me your number. I made that phone call. Bro, that guy, guess where he was? Right outside the office, Yeah. And what I, do, what I donated, bro, I got three times more back. That second right there. That same location, I'm just deepening it right now, bro. That's crazy. The, the, the Instagram message says, send me your number. I replied to it. Where, literally, where across the road? I'm just deepening it right now. Where across the road? And I thought about how much should, how much can I give right now? Like I looked in my pocket. I always like to get, I, like, I haven't got anything on me. It's like, oh, this is all I got. And I think, oh, I want to get food, this, this, and that. That's why I've even eaten right now mm. because of that. So in my head, I'm like, nah, I'm just gonna give it. You know, I'm not even gonna think about it. Like Allah's got me in it. I came back when I got that message, and I made that phone call. I'm like, I'm doing. I didn't even know what he was gonna get, bro. I'm telling you now, when I called him, imagine the guy. I'm expecting. Where's this guy gonna link me? I have to wait. I got this podcast to film. The guy called me. Guess who he is? Right outside the office. I don't know how. When he came. It was a mad thing. Well, that's the power of Allah, bro. It was a mad thing. Yeah. It was a mad thing. And I felt, and I looked at myself and I'm like, freedom! <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't describe that feeling, bro. Just don't stop hoping people will give charity all the time. Uh, even when you have nothing, even when you think it's the last <laughs> bit, just give it. Allah will never leave you without it. That is mad. My nose is bleeding. <laughs> that's mad. Oh, whoa, 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 yeah, you can talk now, bro. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> that was a bit strange, a bit random. I thought oh, you were talking weird. about the charity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I think Shaitan didn't want us to talk about these good things. He tried to interrupt the conversation. But yeah, we were speaking about the charity and stuff. And yeah, that, I think that's something I, I think I need to I need to work on a lot more, inshallah. I'm going to definitely work on it. Because even my life, sometimes as well, the project we're working on every Sunday where we go and feed the homeless as well, it gives you a sense of happiness, purpose that nothing else does. Nothing. Look forward it I look forward to it. It, it. It's genuinely something that I look forward to that gives me a satisfaction that doesn't nothing else can compare with. Um, you got to remember, what was the core of our success in our business? It was always giving back. Giving back. That's true. And what was our ethos? Everywhere we spoke, everything we did, like everything, how we always approached things was always an element of value, give back. Mm. How did we build property? Giving back. What kept? What did we look forward to every single week? It was the fun giving the back to give stuff. Yeah, that exactly. was the most. That was the that was the most satisfying highlight. Yeah, that that got us through the week. We were looking did. forward to that moment, and then 
that in itself is the reason why I believe we become very successful and value, appreciate, and gives a bit more gra- gratitude for what you got. A, a bad habit of just chasing, chasing, or working yourself too much, or then you realize it's dead. Now I look forward to every morning running with the brothers every Sunday. It's a different feeling. Yes. And we all get together and like everyone's sharing their story. Like I was sat down with two boys last week, yeah, both did 14 years in jail. You know? And to know that they're out here now and they're, they're turning their life around, they're PTing, and they're both out, they were on it. And seeing them run, you knew they were running with a purpose, you know, and we're attracting the right people and that. Because that's what we want. We want real hungry men been through it and want to come out and make a change and now they're using that energy and pushing them pushes me, pushing me pushes them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we're just going to grow. So that's a big element of getting given back. Creating a brotherhood, I think. Yeah, bro. That's, that's something that that's society something I'm, lacks right yeah, now. Yeah, bro. I think I, I want to, I want to definitely help create some sort of community, some sort of brotherhood. Bro, we like that a lot, man. A lot. We like that. All, we like that all throughout even our career of growing property together. Yeah, yeah. I always felt just, we were left out, bro. No, but it was just me. And you, it was just bro. me. And you. Was that fun, was the brotherhood. That was it. it was fun. I yeah, it swear was lit. to God. It was lit. <laughs> I could start. I could bro, start another episode speaking about. We were the our most journeys, man. confident two brothers who sat against a lot, a lot, and we. Used to, we, st- we never bro. had the plan, but the thing is, though, realistically, we never had like actual plan. We never really Nothing. had anyone backing us, telling us this is what you should do, guiding us. We just did. And we still uh, sat through it all. I don't know how. And also, we had no blueprint. That's what I'm saying. We no didn't have motivation. There was no nothing. one out there who did it. Like no us. role model. No role models. And then, like, these opportunities would come, and you knew, you knew me, but I was like, no, no. I was a smile did, for you. You, this, <laughs> this, uh, all right, what? Worked really well between me and you, right? You like take, you really like taking risk. You loved it. You would take some crazy risks Man. financially, physically, everything, right? And me, I would always have to come behind and clean it up and clean make sure up, everything yeah. is there's some sort of stability in a way. But for me, it was like I, it, it was fun. Don't get me wrong, but it, I was young as well, and I, I didn't have that emotional intelligence and that responsibility in my head to understand what you was doing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Only till later on, where I feel like we kind of separated. That happened for a reason because I realized a lot about life. Mm. Me, I started growing, I think, really, really growing through responsibility after I left and I needed that. Because when I left school, I came straight to you. You looked after me. Everything was patterned. I was just offering my time, my skill, my value and everything. And then as soon as that I was, left... You was a quick learner though, bro. I know I was, yeah. That was fun. You got to give the that credit, was, bro. You know, I'm going to tell you something, yeah. He made one mistake and never made a mistake again. <laughs> I remember. He made one mistake, yeah? Yeah. And as a brother, to tell off your younger brother, it can come across very difficult. But obviously, would you say I was quite strategic and quite good at that? No, 100%. Like, showing where there was wrong. Oh, you don't... The conversation... I had to literally... No, but the conversation you had with me it, it, is probably the reason why I am today. A million percent. Even this, even this podcast, right? The first thing I ever came to you about, this, which is why I, you, I wanted to do the voice of interest was back in the day thing. I came to you saying to you, bro, I love this speaking thing. I'm good at it. I want to be X, X, Y, Z, motivational speaker, et cetera, et cetera. And you just sat me down. I remember specifically in the back of that car and Audi, we sat down, I remember, and you said to me, bro, you asked me some questions that I didn't even realize that I could even answer. I, I just had the talent. I had the talent, but yeah. I didn't have the story. And now five, six, seven years later, I'm realizing that that whole time away is what m- allows me to be able to sit down in this chair now. And now, have, now I have this credibility. And now, have a story as well. now I can have conversations with you. I can have conversations with different types of people. I can also go deeper because I understand what it's like going into that deep aspect of life. And now I have that story allows me to create voice of interest. And one thing you got to remember how strategic I was. When you came to me for answers, I answered you. You had an answer. It got quite tense. What did I do? I said, pause here one second. Let's Google it together. Mm. And let's get answers from Google. So we watch a YouTube video. I never watched a YouTube video before. Everything I said to you... Is what it was said in the what video. What was said in that video. Valuetainment. I said remember it. Him? Valuetainment. I said it from a place of experience. Because remember, I was a bit more ahead. From experience, I was explaining to you, bro. Like, the reason why I'm a brand, the reason why I got all these people... We, 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 we were coming from a class. And there was hundreds of people in that class. We're coming from a, doing a busy class, and then you was telling me like, "Well, I need to do something like," that. and I'm like, "Bro, but you gonna understand what I've got right now? I've worked hard for it. 
of what Hartford, there was a story behind it. There was there was a there was a purpose why we had that. And I remember, bro, he said, well, this is your thing. Remember you saying that? Mm. I feel like I need to do something. I said, yeah, bro, you need to understand. Like, what you're trying to create, you need to have a story and a purpose. Even just for yourself. So you can execute and take away a selfish element of you. And that's the reason then why you became very selfless. And then your growth aspect in what we are doing was a lot of it about caring for others and worrying about others and helping others. Everything we did, again, I'd been as PT, but we literally transformed people's life. And from that conversation then came the conversation, now you're on board, it took me once to tell you off, and after that, bro, you became a sponge. And the confidence it gives you when you know someone beside you trusts you and takes on every role, but learns from... The best way I always say to teach people if you want to grow a business or grow something is to lead by example. Have that person there present. Don't complicate and talk to them, explain to them all of it. Let them make the mistake, but let them be there. And then shadow each other. And eventually you can literally close a blind eye and there's two of you in the room without even realising. Mm. So I feel like I was always there as well, bro. Like, I was, there was, I think maybe I gave what you... What you say were the funnest best moments that we had when we were I doing think it was the team. harder times uh, the times where people were coming at us but that's what I'm saying there's there's such different characteristics in yeah. between us all I learned to love my characteristics yeah. now my characteristics are so different but they allow a balance within the team unfortunately I feel like my characteristics doesn't get enough shine in the society that we live in but I'm okay with it now and I feel like something like this where I'm able at least to speak and to go deeper I'm able to bring out those characteristics the compassion, the understanding, that that deep, that emotional intelligence that I'm gifted with. I'm I've not I'm not gifted. I worked hard for actually because to be emotionally intelligent, to have compassion, to understand everyone, to want to support everyone, you gotta have this hard work to get there to get to that stage. And now I feel like I'm ready to give it out to the world. But also now I feel like you're gonna grow a your community. Mm. B you're also like. You're gonna become so strategic, and the next guest you have, inshallah, coming, that not only you're helping other people, but a lot of it's gonna to be to help yourself. Mm. So it's gonna be a platform of gathering knowledge and information to build yourself up. Because yeah. yeah, you've been through it for the last five years, but you still got another five years to come. But use your time now wisely to use the next five years as strategies to gain value for value. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I've right gained now, value just listening. Yeah. subscribers. Yeah. Like, when it's going to be on 100, you're going to see crazy. not only the impact your, your the, the people you're impacting, but you're also creating platforms for other people as well. Yeah. You know, and then you're learning and your stories are, are the main thing. And I even said that to you, I said, bro, voice of it, just wait, is it? You need to create a story. What is a story? Now you've got a story. You do. you got a mm. very, bro, like, what we created, yeah, that formula Forget if you failed. We failed with many things, yeah, but that formula, you can now implement it with loads of things. It's about using that formula. That formula strategy will never change and you can just apply it and so many different things and it, all it takes is a large blessing to bless one of them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's it. And even when it, he blesses it, then he'll take it away from you and you might start again. And that's the fun bit about it, that you know the formula and everything life is a formula. Everything is a strategy. Yeah. Everything's a formula, bro. Even the way we have to pray, there's a reason why we pray a certain way. We implement a certain movement. We wash a certain way when we do our do. Every, everything about life is it's a formula, it's a strategy. And once you learn a principle, bro, help others. The more you keep helping other people, don't ever feel too big or too eager. Don't ever feel better than anyone else. We're all the same. And have that fulfillment of joy within your there bro right in there because mm. I always remember if I told you there's two brains where are the two brains in your head and your stomach your gut's there your because gut. you know when you feel anxious what's the first thing that responds not your mind your, your guts gut. and your gut in itself is a brain it's a second it's a second it's, it's probably the final decision you make so make sure in there you're breathing properly and you're laughing yeah that inner laugh there gets you through life and it goes back to you saw some serious obstacles and some sudden changes people used to throw against me. And you're like, I don't know how you handled that meeting. I don't know how you stayed so calm. And you would have bugged out. 
I used to sit in that room knowing that people around me, like yourself and whoever it was there, probably felt that for me. But I used to sit in there with a smile on my face and in there I was laughing because I was like, they don't know, bro. Yeah. They don't know when someone takes away your freedom, bro. And you're sat in there and all of a sudden you have to readapt and rebuild. And it was a tough moment. It was the hardship. And it was that struggle. And I'm thinking, you standing right there. Yeah, you might create a further obstacle, but you don't understand. I'm coming for you for that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It might not be now, but... Like, I'm planting some seeds at the same time. I can't lie. You are a proper leader, though. I'm not going to lie, but you are a proper leader. <laughs> This guy. <laughs> and always ahead, always ready. Like, if you think about it, bro, and always with confidence. Mm. Always. Like, that's, that's, because we prayed. Yeah. Because we true. prayed. That's true. We prayed. And you know, as soon as me and you finish prayer, like, we look at each other, we're like, and it's gone now. That's true, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. We can argue, things could have gone wrong, middle of the day, dawn, especially like, you realize more dawn and acid because you played them together, yeah? Yeah. And we look. I remember those times we would finish the prayer. You turn around to me, hug me, and kiss me, and be like, oh, I love you, bro. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh. that's what I knew. Like, bro, like, well, that, that that argument we just had doesn't even mean anything. Doesn't even mean it has anything, no value. bro. And bro. that's what I always try to do in life right now, bro. I just don't want to argue, no one. Yeah. Don't want tension. But you know what? It's life, bro. I'll be real with you. Like everything we experience will happen for a reason. Now it's yeah, of course. We'll grow. Like the whole point of life is to grow. And the whole thing I learned is just, you know, learn from the experiences and just become a better person like starting this was scary for me bro. like I, nobody realizes it like the way i think so perfectly about things i'm like oh it needs to be like this i'm a perfectionist but i just said to myself you know what why wait put six months head down you don't know where it's gonna be in six exactly. months put a year put five years of grafting doing what you love bro i love this you gotta understand you like, it. voice of ages i love it, it. like just the I intro that it. we had like, yeah that, that, that was that funny was man sick. it was sick and now i'm just excited to build a community hopefully and you know, I just hope everyone can support it, and it was it was a mad play, bro. Bro, come on. <laughs> bro, thank you for that, man. Appreciate on, it, appreciate and um, it, I look forward to this next jo next journey with Voice of Idris, and we look forward to seeing your next episode, guys. Take care, guys. Bless, Peace. Bro. Love. Bless, bro. Nothing,